Let's try to analyze a perfect frame or a tress um, in this video. Um, as I said before, I would recommend you uh, to go through uh, these videos if you haven't already done so before moving into analysis of perfect frames. Go through support reactions, forces and moments. Um, so what you have got here is a tress which is supported at A and B and is acted upon by a load of 750 Newton at joint C. DAC is 30 degree, DCA is 60 and DBC is 30 degree. So the angles are given. The length AC, remember AC is 5 meter, CB is uh, 2.5 meter. If you can calculate that from uh, the other dimensions shown here, it's 7.5 so this is 2.5 here. So we are going to analyze this through method of joints. Method of joints. I mentioned in the previous video that there are two methods, method of joints and method of sections. And uh, at, at this video, in this video, we are dealing with method of joints. So you need to find the reactions. And also you need to find the member forces. Members are AD, 1, 2, 3, you have got 4 and 5 members, 1, 2, 3, 4 joints and a 750 Newton force. So let's try to analyze this. So what you have got here is, I've just shown the other angles because from this triangle ADC you can have 30, 60 already given and therefore this is 90 to complete the 180 degree and from this triangle um, well from the bigger triangle you have 30 here and 30 here and therefore this should be 120 and because this is 90 this is 30 then and from the smaller triangle this is 30 and this is 30 and therefore this is 120 so the members 1 2 3 4 and 5 so going back to the equilibrium conditions, the, equi uh, the condition of equilibrium for a force system is forces in x direction, forces in y direction and all moments should be zero. Summation of all these cases should be zero. So let's try to find the reactions or support reactions at A and B. So taking moment about the point A, you have a reaction passing through A which is creating no moment. A load of 750 Newton acting vertically downward at 5 meter away from A and thereby creating a clockwise moment and therefore a negative moment and the magnitude of moment is 750 into 5 and the force RB acting vertically upward at 7.5 meter from A creating a counterclockwise moment and therefore a positive moment and the magnitude of moment is RB into 7.5. So for moment equilibrium, you should have 750 into 5 is equal to 7.5 into RB or 7.5 into RB minus 750 into 5 is equal to 0. I'm just taking this, uh, these two moments to either side of the equation. So you have 750 into 5 equal to 7.5 RB or RB equal to 750 into 5 divided by 7.5 and that is 500 Newton. So that's your RB here. So that's RB which is acting upward vertically and from the equation of vertical equilibrium you have RA plus RB is equal to 750 or RA equal to 750 minus RB which is 500 Newton so 750 minus 500 that is 250 Newton so that's your RA. So we completed the first step we analyzed the support reactions here so this step is completed now you need to find the forces in the members so how we are going to do that what we basically do is Take a joint from the truss, either this one, this one, this one, or this one. You can take any joints 
and analyze the joint or apply the equilibrium conditions in the joint. How do you select a joint? The condition is there shouldn't be more than two unknown forces. So if you select this member, this joint, you have a known force of 750 and three members with unknown forces. So you cannot solve this joint if you select this one. And if you select this one, again you have three members with unknown forces. So you should only have maximum of two unknown forces in a joint which you select to analyze. So if you select joint A, you have a reaction RA which is known as 250 Newton and two members 1 and 4 with unknown forces. You can also select B with a reaction RB which is known and two unknown members 3 and 5 with unknown forces. So you, I'm going to do both a and B and then moving to member C, joint C. So let's try analyze joints A and B here. So what is shown here is I've just separated those joints and shown this as a, as a free body diagram. So you have RA at joint A and a force or member with a force F1 acting at 30 degree with the horizontal and another member which is having a force of F4 we are acting horizontally uh, in that force system. So for equilibrium, again, we need to apply these conditions. And for joint B, you have vertical upward force RB, two members F5 and F3, with F3 having a 30 degree angle with the horizontal and F5 along the horizontal axis. So for equilibrium, again, you can apply these conditions moment you don't have to find the moment because you already find the reactions here and now for vertical equilibrium and horizontal equilibrium you should have um, uh, the equilibrium equations and you can solve it through that so if you resolve the force f1 you can see there is a horizontal component and a vertical component and this is a all forces in this force system so because this is 30, you can see this angle also is 30 degree. So for vertical equilibrium, you have RA acting upward. So the vertical component of F1 should be downward. And therefore, this is in this direction. And therefore, in the horizontal equilibrium, this force on F on member 4 should be in this direction. How do I find that? Because this is the only horizontal force and that is in negative x direction and therefore the other horizontal force should be in positive x, x direction and these should be equal and also these should be equal. So we know this is F1 and this is F1 sin 30 and this is F1 cos 30. So you have F1 sin 30 equal to RA and F1 cos 30 equal to F4. So F1 sin 30 equal to RA or F1 equal to RA by sin 30. We already found RA as a 250. So 250 by sin 30, that is 500 Newton. And again, F1 cos 30 equal to F4. F1 we already found out 500. So F4 is 500 cos 30, that is 433.012 Newton. The case is same here as well. You have an inclined force on the member 3, that is F3, and you can resolve that in two components. Because RB is acting upward, this should be acting downwards, and therefore this is towards the positive x direction, and therefore the force on member 5 is towards the negative x direction. And as in the previous case, this is 30 degree, and therefore this is 30 degree, and this is F3 sin 30, this is F3 cos 30. So F3 sin 30 equal to RB and F3 cos 30 equal to F5. So F3 sin 30 equal to RB, F3 equal to RB by sin 30. We know RB is 500 Newton. So RB by sin 30, 500 by sin 30, that is 1000 Newton. And then again, F3 cos 30 equal to F5 so, F5 equal to F3 cos 30, that is 1000 cos 30, that 
is 866.03. Simple. Just resolve the force into two components and apply the equilibrium conditions. And now we are moving to the joint C. So you have again your equilibrium equations here and you have got a, an inclined force here. So you can resolve that into two components that is your horizontal and your vertical. And because this is acting downwards, this force should be acting upward and therefore this is acting towards the negative x direction and therefore the net force on 2 is in this direction and because this is acting upward for vertical equilibrium you know this angle is 60 and this is 60 <coughs> excuse me so therefore f2 sine 60 should be equal to 760 or F2 equal to 750 by sine 60, that is 866.03. And that's it, we already calculated that, 750 by sine 60, that is 866.03. We already calculated all the, uh, the uh, member forces. But just for double checking whether our equations are, or our calculations are correct, you can apply that condition for the equilibrium, horizontal equilibrium of this joint. The forces are F5 which is known, F4 which is known and we just calculated F2 therefore you can calculate this one which is F2 cos 30. This is F2 sin, th sin 60 sorry, it's not 30 it's 60. So for the horizontal equilibrium of this you know F5 you know the directions of F5 and F4 for F5 is acting away from the joint f4 again is acting away from the joint so you have f5 acting away from the joint f4 also acting away from the joint and this also is negative x direction so f5 is positive and f4 and the horizontal component of f2 are negative so you have f5 equal to f4 plus f2 cos 60 if you satisfy this equation, then the calculations are correct. If this equation is not correct, then there is something wrong in some of the force analysis. So you need to revise all the things. But here our calculations are correct. So you have F5, which is already known as 866, which is equal to F4, which is 433, plus 866 cos 60, which is 433. So you have 866.03 equal to 433.01 plus 433.01 which is again 866.03. So this is correct and therefore our forces uh, or force analysis is correct. Now I have shown it the all forces all the calculated forces in this figure here. You have F1 500 Newton which is acting towards the joint and therefore that will be same here as well and these forces are called tensile forces in a member and F4 acting away from the joint and that will be same in the other joint as well and this call, force is called a compressive force. So the forces acting towards the joint is a tensile force and the force acting away from the joint is a compressive force. So you have F1 500 F2 866.03 compressive this is tensile and F3 again tensile 1000 Newton F4 compressive 433.01 and F5 again compressive 866.03 so that's it we analyzed a complete truss system